Good morning! In the past few months, we have learned about some programs to help us edit those images that we want to use in our family history. Today, we'll learn a little bit about IrfinView. This program is on all of the computers here at the BYU Family History Library and in many family history centers around the globe. And yes, it does have a funny name. Here is your history lesson for today. IrfinView is named after its creator, Irfan Skiljan from Joch, Bosnia, Herzegovina, now living in Vienna. Thanks, Wikipedia speech, for the pronunciation lessons. I did the best I could with this good old Utah accent. Look it up on Wikipedia. IrfinView is a very fast, small, compact, and innovative freeware graphic utility program that is installed on the BYU Family History Library computers. It can capture, edit, print, or save image files. Now that you know what IrfinView is, let's see where we can find it on the BYU computers. Remember, if you're not in the BYU library, you can download IrfinView at IrfinView.com, or you may be able to find it in the next slide. I'll show you where you can find it if you are on other computers and family history centers around the world. For our purposes right now, this is what as of February 1st, 2018, the BYU desktop computers look like. If you'll come down, you'll notice in the left-hand corner, we are using Windows 10, and that's what this big arrow is pointing to. So to find Irfan View, you can click on where it says Ask Me Anything and just start typing Irfan View, and it will pop right up to the top, and then you can just click on Irfan View, and you'll be all ready to go. If for some reason it's already been used, this is what you're going to get. When you go to Ask Me Anything and type in Earth and View, if Earth and View has been used recently, it's going to show up on the top left-hand corner of the screen. If you're at one of the many family history centers around the world, this may be the desktop that you see. Look for an icon. See that little funky red icon? Click on that. When you click on the Earth and View icon, this is the screen that you get. It's perfectly blank, just ready for you to fill it. To access the capture setup, click on the letter C. Select number 5, Custom Rectangle, Region, Capture. Then select Show Captured Image in Main Window. You may want to put your image on a clipboard, but for this I will leave it as it is set. If you put it on a clipboard, you can then paste it wherever you need it in other programs. The hotkey on the top right will allow you to make multiple additional captures using the same settings. Click Start to begin your capture. Click and drag the crosshairs to select the image you want. Click on the mouse to capture or press ESC Escape to cancel. If all of this is sounding complicated, practice a few times and you'll get the hang of it. Here's a note about screen capture. If it is at all possible, save the image and then edit it, rather than using the screen capture tool. If you hit the print screen button on the keyboard, you are using screen capture, and the resolution won't be as high as if you had saved your image first. Here's how to edit your image. Open Earthen View and load your image in one of two ways. Number one, click on the file open and look for the image that you have saved. Or number two, click on edit paste if you use screen capture or the print screen button. Here is a visual of what the last slide was talking about. If your image was saved in a file somewhere, navigate to where the file is located and then open it. These are saved pictures from a cemetery in Pennsylvania. They're on my external hard drive. 
I navigate to the picture I want, and I open it. Oh, and by the way, yeah, all those pictures, none of them have names, just those funky, those funky numbers. Don't do what I did. Do your homework and name your pictures. This looks good, but I also see that it's a little crooked, and I'm not a fan of all of that de dead grass. This is where I can straighten and crop the picture so that I see just what I want to see. The next couple of slides will show you how to do this. If your image needs a little straightening out, click on Edit, Show Paint Dialog, and use the Straighten tool shown here in yellow. When you're finished, click on the Selection tool that is shown in red before you try to crop the image. Click on the Selection tool and then click on the upper left-hand corner of the area you want to keep and drag it to the lower right corner and release. The yellow arrow shows the crosshairs of what I want to crop. Once I have that outlined, I can go to Edit Crop Selection and Finish. Ta-da! No more yucky grass. Of course, there are purists out there that say to leave the grass. Now that I'm looking at this, I'm more inclined to leave a little grass around the edges. Maybe what this picture needed was just a haircut and not a buzz job. However, to each his own. Here's where you find the edit paste function if you used screen capture. I found this awesome wedding announcement for my aunt and uncle in a Pennsylvania newspaper. Since I couldn't crop the article and get both the picture and the text, I did them separately. Notice a few things about how this page is set up. I always use advanced search because it gives me more leeway in my search keywords. There is a reference URL listed for this article so that I have a source. I also copy the date and name and page of the newspaper in case the link goes bye-bye in the future. Also, there is a share button that I can use to share with many different sites like Google, Facebook, Blogger, Yammer, Pinterest, etc. I don't see one for family search out of the 200 plus choices. I guess it's time to write a note to the holder of this collection so that family search can be included in their share list. Using the tools we just learned about, this is how the crops look. Truthfully, for a wedding picture, I would have saved it first in a file so that I could get the better resolution. However, you get the idea. These older wedding announcements, this is from 1948, are fun to read because they include so much more information than today's announcements. I didn't know this aunt very well, but I did get a peek into her personality as I read what her dress looked like, what kind of flowers she carried, and who officiated in the ceremony. Plus, my dad was an usher. My dad was 15 years old at the time. Here is printed proof that my crusty old father was, in fact, a young person at one point in his life. I would never have believed it. Remember that it's those little life details that add spice to family history. Here is one final thought. Remember this quote when you are putting together your family history. We are who we are because they were who they were. Please visit our homepage to find out more about our one-on-one -on -one help in library classes and library resources. One last thing to do on your to-do list, be sure to subscribe to our BYU Family History YouTube channel for more short family history videos and in-depth webinars. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.